Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops, plaster, murals, pretty much anything with paint or plaster, and I also complete commission projects all over the place, residential, commercial, you name it, we do it. Today, I'm gonna to show you a technique. I'm gonna show you a traditional polished plaster technique using the white Grisello line-based polished plaster, or simply re commonly referred to as Venetian plaster. Referred to as Venetian plaster. Let's start out with the baby steps or the big, the basics. First thing I did was prime the surface with a base coat, and it's a lime compatible base coat, meaning it will not have lime plaster can sometimes have an adverse reaction to certain paints, meaning that you put the primer, whatever, a primer from your local store on, you roll it on, you put the lime plaster on, and the plaster, the pH content is so hot that what happens is it'll cause delamination issues. Um, think of doing, if you've ever done traditional plaster, like just white plaster in somebody's home. You can't paint over white plaster for about six months until the pH content comes down. Same concept. But still always stay, I know what you're going to think, it's like, oh, I could just, if that wall has been primed for six months, I could just come back and put plaster right over it. I wouldn't do it because then you void the manufacturer's warranty because you're outside of the process of the system. So, simple. This is the quartz base primer. It's proprietary to this company. Um, so it cleans up with soap and water. You can brush, roll, spray. It's interior or exterior. You can tint it to any color using pigments, never paint. What else? I put it on with a, this has been put on with a, a half inch nap roller. I just rolled one nice coat on and it's good to go. Now for Grisello, I like the traditional application where I will put down two coats of Marmarino which takes us to our next step. Marmarino is a lime-based plaster. This is simply the... Uh, now, here's the problem with lime plasters. or Italian plasters, Venetian plasters. There's so many different types. Just because I'm saying Marmarino, um, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of different types of Marmarino. Um, everything that you need to purchase to, redo, to recreate what I'm doing today are in the comments section below. Follow those links. You can buy all the products and the tools to recreate this. If you go on the internet and type in Marmarino, you're going to find all kinds of stuff. Some of it's going to have a real big, heavy, granular te texture to it. Some of it's going to be super fine. Some of it's going to be really smooth and creamy. It, there's so many. There's too, it's not too many. Don't get me wrong. They all do different things, create different techniques, create different looks, and that's absolutely wonderful. But if you want to create this technique, the way you see it today, follow these links. So, Marmarino that I'm using today is simply called Marmarino. Um, cleans up with soap and water. It is lime-based. Protect your eyes. Be very careful. Interior, exterior. Cleans up with soap and water. You can tint it using lime-compatible pigments or oxide pigments. That's very, very important. Um, I'm just going to use it straight out of the bucket because today it's going to be my leveling plaster. So what that means is, or my bed coat. Meaning I can take a, a pretty gnarly looking wall that's in pretty rough shape. Like we get these new home construction where they say the walls are smooth, but yet I can see all the joints from the, where the board comes together. I can see usually where they spot out the nail heads or the screw heads because they don't just do it. They don't do it, whatever. It's, that's, that's a whole different discussion. They don't do it properly so we can come in and simply put a Grisello, the smooth plaster, over top of it. If we try to go over top of some of these things, look, if you painted a wall with semi-gloss and you see the imperfections, you're going to see it with Grisello plaster. And at that point, you've already spent a lot of time and a lot of money, and now it's time to fix those problems. So we fix the problems before we come to them. I'm going to take the Marmarino straight out of the bucket. I'm going to put two coats on, pulling it tight. And you'll see what tight means. That means I want it smooth. First coat's going to go on, have like a slight texture or softness to it. And I'm going to pull the second coat really tight. That's going to give me a slick surface. That way when I do my Grisello, I can go over it with two coats, get it smooth as a piece of glass, and look slick. Now, because I'm using a white colored plaster, stainless steel spatula and my plastic trowel. Plastic trowel simply because there's no carbon in here whatsoever. And if you're using a stainless steel trowel, I'm only using this to scoop it out of the bucket and put it on my blade. I'm not going to actually touch the wall with this. This or any good trowel, any trowel, it's stainless steel, could leave blackish blue marks on the plaster. By using a plastic trowel, no black and blue marks. All right, so we're going to start with the Grisello, then we'll talk about 
I'm sorry, we're going to start with Mar Marino and talk about Grisello when we get there. So the Mar Marino is coming straight out of the bucket. Nothing fancy, no color added to it. I'm putting it on my trowel like so, and I'm going to put it on there. This is a Pavon plastic trowel, and it's a very nice trowel. There's a lot of plastic trowels out there. What I like about this one is it does not have any, like, it's not gray, meaning it has no color. Some are, have color put into them for whatever reason. This is 100% natural, but here's the problem. See how it rolls around the back of that trowel? It's just a characteristic of the product. Nothing to do with the trough. It's a heavy product. And that's the beveled edge. It just slips around the back of that bevel. So I'm putting it on. You can see I'm putting some pressure to it. Putting it on, smoothing it out. Putting it on, smoothing it out. I'll take my trowel every, or my spatula, clean it up every so often. I'll come back in here and just clean this up. And honestly, that right there is smooth enough that I could go over top of it with the Grisello, and I probably will. The biggest thing about doing, you, know, you want to do it right, but the more your hands are on this wall, the more it's going to cost you. So when you get proficient with these tools and techniques and understand your materials, then you're able to do what you want to do or not what you want to do, I'm sorry. You're able to save money, meaning you can lower your costs if you choose to, keep your costs where they're at, and don't be known as the cheap guy on the block, but you increase your profits. The biggest thing is we want high-end, high-end, high-end results. This is not from the big box store. You're not going to just walk into a store and find these things on the shelf. It just doesn't work that way. They're specialty materials because this isn't a big, big industry. It's a specialty industry. All right, let's just finish this off and then we'll let it dry. I probably am going to do a second coat just because I'm not super crazy about some of the things I'm seeing. And what I mean by that, there's just some stuff here. Actually, got rid of it. There we go. All right, it's gotta dry 100%. Okay, so the Marmarino is dry, 100%, ready to go. That's straight out of the bucket, no color it. It's pretty good, has a good white, it is really good. Um, now, we're getting ready to get started. So let's go back to Tool Talk. Plastic trowel. This is not the same trowel that I used the first time. This is a different trowel, they're, they're marked. I actually have them all numbered. The reason for that is the Marmarino has a texture, an aggregate. When you put it on, it leaves scratch marks on the edge of this tool. Those scratch marks then when you put, if you try to use that trowel in Grisello, those scratch marks could come through and you'll see them. So I have a separate trowel for finishing pla to, for my polished plaster that only touches polished plaster, okay? So I keep them in the toolbox, they're marked clearly, and I have different tools. So now, Grisello plaster, polished line. So, this is Grisello, then again, if you go on the internet and Google Grisello, you're gonna find all kinds of things, and they're confusing because there's lots of different Grisellos from different manufacturers. And again, to recreate this exact same technique with these exact same materials to take the guesswork out of it, comments, take you to in the comments section, links to the products, all right? So the Grisello, I took and I tinted it with, uh, I had a gallon and I put one ounce of white pigment into uh, the Grisello and that gave me the white, brilliant white that I'm looking for. So let's get started. And we're gonna do that by putting some plaster on our trowel. Start with a small amount, top corner at the ceiling, and we come, kind of come out, pull it down. Taking our time, we're not in a rush. We want it to look good. 
We're not too concerned about the dry time because we're just applying the plaster right now. Meaning, you don't have to sit there and run across the wall like you see in a lot of these simple videos. This is considered, you know, it's, this is like, this is not like plastering an entire room with traditional plaster or stucco. This is a much finer technique. Take your time, do it right. We want it smooth as a piece of glass. So we're just putting it on, pressing, smoothing it out. On, down, and so on. Now the plastic trowel has a different bevel to it than the traditional stainless trowels. So it takes a little bit more getting used to. And as you use it, it, well, let me go back. And the reason it's a little bit different, because it's plastic, they can't, they don't make that edge so tapered right out the gate. You can see here, it's kind of a heavy taper, but it's still tapered. After you use these trials for a while, because I'm right-handed, you can see it this way, this taper is a lot softer, because I've worn it down. Get a little bit more plaster and finish it off. And there we go. All right. Nice and clean, good to go. Missed a spot there. Now the white plaster is a little bit more forgiving because you don't see a lot of things that you might normally see with heavier colors. So, meaning the technique, the method of application, you don't notice as much because it's hard to see. And that's fine, because this makes for a beautiful, slick, sexy room, ceilings, you name it. Um, let's let it dry. We're going to do our second coat. We're going to burnish it and then we'll show you how to finish off. See you in a bit. Dry. Ready for the second and final coat. Same tools, same materials, pretty much the same technique. Let's get to it. Because it doesn't do itself. Alright, I am going to pull this a little tighter. Almost burnishing as it gets applied. And I'll explain burnishing in a second. Whoops, I just got away from me. Got a little junk from somewhere. Now you'll see it is a little more difficult to burnish with a plastic trowel than it is a steel trowel until you get used to it because at first it's a little, a little wonky because of that hard bevel. I'm just going to take, change my hands up a little bit, see how I'm using it, so just this, make it a little bit easier. Okay. All right, gather this up, see this? That's why you have your spatula. One of the reasons you have your spatula. Gather it up so you can control it. And after we put it on, well, we're gonna go right into the burnish because it's nice and tight. I know, how are you gonna do a big wall with sets up that fast? It's not as hard as you think, you can do it. If you think you need a partner to help you, you can get somebody. One person applies it, is proficient, and that way the method of application doesn't change because everybody has different body motions, mechanics, whatever you want to call it. You, you apply it, the other person comes behind you and burnishes it. This is bot right there. All right, I'm gonna take my rag, a rag, and clean my trowel. First I'm gonna scoop off the, the goo. The plaster, I know it's not good. Let's get it off of there. Typically, I would have a bucket on the job with a scrub brush and I would clean it as I go and then clean it up really well before I burnish. That's a small sample. So I'm just going to take a rag and gently clean off the plaster. Now, these still get sharp enough, believe it or not. 
Listen. That'll cut you if you go like this. We don't want to do that. All right. So it's going to set up. We're going to come back with a pressure, a soft on the bevel, and press down so we can compress it and get that luck. Ha ha, I can't talk today. Get that luxurious gloss that we're looking for. And you're going to see, now, am I getting plaster? A little bit's coming off. Keep a rag handy. And just keep going over it. I'm going to go right to left to start with. Okay. I'm getting plaster off my tape. So let's just do this to clean that up. Off the tape. Problem solved. All right, and you can tell as it dries, it sets up more, it gets harder and harder, firmer and firmer, and you're going to be able to get more out of that burnish. If it's too damp, you're not going to be able to burnish this plaster very well. If it's dry, it's hardly going to burnish at all. You're going to find that phase. A friend of mine from France, we did some plasters together. He always referred to it as when it's in love. It's still talking. It's still communicating. When it's too wet, it's all mushy. Not real fun. When it's dry, they don't talk anymore. They don't get along. When it's in love, it's still in that soft state, humid. And everything's fine. We're all getting along. It's all cheerful. So that's what he, Pierre always said when the plaster was in love meaning humid. Let's take a peek, see what we got. <laughs> Look at this. I'll come around slowly. Can you see me? Not really. Let's try this angle. Oh. There you are. See it? Polished Grisello. All right, now I'm gonna leave this finished just like this, and here's why. I wanna show you options with waxing. And we're gonna talk about that in a whole separate video or else this becomes a very, very long video and I don't wanna do that. There you have your polished Grisello plaster. Super simple. I will have the other video up in a day or two and I will make sure there's a link to it in the comment section below. So again, everything you need to do to recreate what you saw here in this video is gonna be down below. My name is Ron Lehman, I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.